Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com and the slamming gate in the garden in the distance and the sound of my vibrating humming laptop on the table quite near to where I'm currently sitting this is let me bore you to sleep. Please only listen to this. When you can safely close your eyes, because this recording that is being recorded specifically to induce sleepiness may cause sleepiness and Therefore, it's very important to only listen to my voice. when you're able to feel increasingly more relaxed not just in your body but also as your mind starts to slow down your mind may drift And as I said that, I seem to have done an internal fart. Like I did a fart in my stomach. I heard it, it sounded like a fart. And it was definitely gas. Not supposed, not supposed to stay in my stomach. How weird. And you may think, not as weird as the fact that you're mentioning it during a sleepy recording that's being recorded specifically in order for 
sleepiness to take over your body and your mind. However, the sound from my stomach seemed quite loud. Just like that train that's going by in the distance. I want to say the train's going by. It's almost like I'm talking like it's flying over the, the building. It's not. It's on the railway tracks. But sometimes it sounds closer than other times and I'm not sure why because there are times when I can just be sitting here in my big black squeaky chair which is Peeling like a big hairy sunburnt back, you know, after a few days it's peeling off, and that's what's happening to my chair. The only reason I can imagine for this state of affairs is that whilst I was out during the summer my chair was in the garden sunbathing and I kept saying use suntan lotion if you go out in the garden and sunbathe but my chair kept saying no I never go out there why would I need suntan lotion now you know why because you're all dry and wrinkled up like a pensioner's willy all shriveled <laughs> and the chair the chair <laughs> the chair is falling apart it's falling falling apart But it's okay because it doesn't have to be visually pleasing. It's not a model on the catwalk. Guess what I saw today? I was walking to the garage and I saw a man walk from the garage to a van and he was wearing shorts. You know, the things that children wear at school in the 50s and like a little dusty worm no so yeah and it, I thought mm. 
it was about five degrees. And there I was with my hat on and my gloves. Oh, the gloves. I was wearing my gloves. I love my gloves. Did you realize a glove has the word love in it? Huh? G love. I put my G loves on. I love my glove. See? I never aspired to be a rapper. But I think I would have been quite okay at it. I'll do one off the top of my head. When I left school, when I left school, I, I didn't want to be a rapper. I ended up working in a chip shop, covered in batter. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my rap. I walked down the street. I saw some curtains had a peek. I saw the person inside. I gave a big smile. Then I went to prison for a while. No, I don't know. I see you used to. I used to write poems. Poems. I think my inspiration for poems uh, was love. I'm not talking about my gloves. I've never seen a pair of gloves and thought, where's my, where's my poetry book? I've got to write a sonnet. Never happened. Never happened. This, uh, I was completely bethroned. Is it bethroned or bethrosed or besotted? I'm trying not to use the word obsessed. So besotted, which is another word for obsessed. But I was besotted with a girl at school. I was at school as well at the time. And I was a couple of years older. Um, biologically. And I would say she's probably a couple of years older than me. Biologically. So, you know, it's... Uh, I was very... It's very immature for my age. I kind of still am. Um, my voice broke last Wednesday... So, I guess I'm going to live to be about 329, which is quite good, I suppose. And, uh, I don't know where I came up with the number of 320. I would like to live forever it's not just so I can see everybody else die it's I think it would be for me it would be kind of like an educational thing I'd love to be able to just go to university and study and study and study and knowing that I had endless time I could learn French or something or do something equally pointless 
you know, just just for the hell of it. But I think we really, you imagine, well, you might not need to imagine, you might already be a prolific language learner. You learner, you. Some people can learn lots of different languages and speak lots of different dialects and stuff. And I'd like to say I admire them, but I just don't really. <laughs> just don't. I don't see the point. But that's... I'm at home with my ignorance. I'm very, very relaxed into it. I don't know. Is it? When I was in Bulgaria, I would have loved to have been able to speak Bulgarian because I actually met some people that I actually wanted to talk to. In fact, I probably met more people that I wanted to talk to in the 10 days I was in Bulgaria than previous 10 years in England. You know, I've not many, not met many people in my life and thought, I wish I could speak, wish I could just speak the language and communicate with them. But then that wouldn't be logical, would it? Because most people that I've met speak English. But I've met a lot of people that I imagine if there was a language barrier I might be rather pleased, you know, like after the first conversation and then they just stopped being able to speak English and I couldn't understand them anymore. I was like, oh, never mind. That's a shame. We'll get back together and have another conversation when I've learnt your language. See you in 500 years. <laughs> and then I'll hide. The thing is, if really, if you could live forever, if I could live forever and ever and ever, I would play hide and seek. I'd always win. Because I could just hide anywhere. Hide under a tree, at the top of a tree, or just keep walking. And I'd never get caught, never get found. I'd win every single game of hide and seek. Now, some people may say that having the gift of eternal life would be somewhat trivialised and not respected if it was just used to win children's games. But what I say to them is mm. and I think that generally always wins. I think sometimes the the small child's response is the best response you'll ever get you know if someone says something to you and you just you say back to them regardless of what they've said doesn't matter same response what you say is what you are Another one is, you know what, that's what. Mm. 
now who's the childish one? You could play practical jokes, couldn't you, on people? If you were just going to live forever, didn't need to eat, because the living forever can't be dependent upon health or food or water. So basically you didn't be able to live without having to eat or drink or anything. Otherwise it's not living forever if it's dependent upon circumstances including oxygen so you get to live forever you could play practical jokes on people yeah you could couldn't you, you could just set up a whole big scenario where you let a family member close to you inherit an old house that you left in your will and you've gone missing. They don't know that you're going to live forever. And so what you do is you tell them that they can only have the house if they go and live in the hut, the house. So what you do is you build the house in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by swamp and alligators and bats, your giraffe. And you have this house And they've only got one little bridge that they can get over. So they have to walk over the bridge because it won't take a car. But the stipulation is they have to live in the house. And the property, including all the areas, worth lots of money. I don't know, you know. It's made up, isn't it? So I can. It's worth a hundred thousand pounds. And then you tell them it's haunted and, you know, you don't tell them because they think you've gone. But, you know, they say don't. The stipulation is you have to sleep there. Or maybe just uh, for six months and then you can sell it. Give me something like that. And then what I would do before I sent them the thing, I'd, I'd have the house built. And when I got it built, I'd get myself tarmacked into the, the ceiling of the bedroom, just above where the bed's gonna be. So I'll just stay there, all ready. Maybe take a book. And then I'll have the whole thing set in motion. So that, you know, my sister gets the letter, you know, the will saying, oh, you've inherited this from JJ. And you've, uh, you have to live in it for six months in order to inherit it. Otherwise, it will be donated to I don't know the zoo I don't know whatever I don't know what's uh, you'd think I'd be able to remember a charity wouldn't you I'm kind of like a charity <laughs> kind of you know, doing something to help people. I'm being boring to help people that maybe have active minds 
and to calm down and relax focusing on me and my voice and in turn allowing you to just you know let go and slow down and calm down and relax blah 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 so a few months later there's my sister and her husband they'd moved in they're in bed they think this six months is nearly up because they've been there for five months and 24 days and they think a few more days and then we're done we can leave here we can sell it obviously say goodbye to the uh, alligators first because we have bonded but then we're going to leave sell this place and uh, we'll be able to buy a maybe a mansion somewhere in England maybe in the countryside or we can get a studio apartment in London so you know it just depends what we can do with our money the millions and uh, and they'll be talking to each other and just as I hear I'll, I'll wait and then suddenly they'll see the sledge I'm going to sledge through the ceiling and I'll fall through and land on them and go boo surprise so I think that'd be quite a good practical joke especially when the punchline is I'm still alive you don't inherit nothing contract void <laughs> which would probably be a little bit rude but yeah, maybe I could definitely win a staring contest with an ape at the zoo so they like to stare but I'd have nowhere to go I wouldn't have to leave I could just stay there in fact I could get into the cage because I'm indestructible but I wouldn't because it's obviously not a good idea to recommend that because that would be very silly so cementing yourself into a ceiling for six months that's okay then is it no I'm not saying that either come on it's all just silliness silly 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 silliness I wonder what other things I would do you know what even if I was going to live if I would read my advice right if you were going to live forever and ever and ever I suppose a few bits of advice would be first of all and probably most important no matter how caught up you get in the fact that you're going to be around forever and you can do anything you want for as long as you want please still don't waste time watching Superman 4 it's a really bad film please even honestly even if life is eternal it won't f it, that oh 
you'll never get that time back and that one and a half hours will seem like an eternity. It's, it's really, 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 really bad film. The first three were really brilliant. The fourth one, sadly, actually, I think it was written and directed by Superman himself. You know, I remember at this time thinking, well, I wish you should just stick to horse riding. But then, you know, after that, I thought, oh no. Honestly, he, the the script is oh, it's really bad, really bad. And I love Superman. I love Christopher Reeve. I, you know, but that. Although he wasn't a really good film, I mean, other than Superman, where he was a time traveller. And he fell in love, was he staying in a hotel, and he fell in love with a woman in a picture. And he went, bye byes he went to a nice little sleep. And he time travelled to, and he met the lady and had a romance with her. I can't remember what it was called, but one thing I'm pretty sure of is he neither wrote nor directed the film because it was very good. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's, I think he was the best Superman. No Superman can... Because he, he had, I don't know, he had more, more depth to him than any other Superman that I've seen. You know, it was funny. Um, didn't take itself too seriously, unlike the the DC Superman, like in the latest films he's quite a serious man but it's quite weird though because in the last film that Superman was in which had Aquaman uh, Wonder Woman The Flash and Cyborg is it Cyborg? I don't know and all four of those superhuman people couldn't match Superman all at the same time Which doesn't seem fair. Because when you see a superhuman or a superhero in the film, their own film, they are the top super person. You know, they've they're the strongest and the fastest and all that stuff but when you put them together and you add they're all kind of they've got equal qualities in some ways and they've all got strength and the Flash, I mean, it was, it was speed, obviously, with him. Um, not, I don't talk about Flash Gordon. It wasn't that Flash. Oh, 
do da da do the do 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 wasn't that one. It was uh the flash as in very fast very fast so I prefer I don't, I don't I don't think comparing things is always particularly useful but I think in this situation comparing two superheroes that both have the same superpower is pretty useful although 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 uh, in the TV show The Flash he heals really quickly because everything happens very quickly which is why he's single most of the time I imagine and when he gets injured he heals now with the X-Men and I forget his name but he's uh, by the way if you hear the gate in the background there's nothing I can do about it it's I'm sure someone just stands out there just slamming the gate through utter boredom. Maybe they're listening to me. <laughs> it's, it, it causes people <laughs> to stand there and just close gates constantly. And... Um, silver streak or silver something and he is Magneto's son in the X-Men the like the new generation X-Men and or origins or whatever but in the last film he gets his leg injured so he's he's unable to do anything. Or was it his arm? I think it was his leg. So that that kind of made me think, well, he hasn't got exactly the same powers as the Flash. However, the special effects with the DC, I'm um, no with the X-Men and the really fast man on that one is just really really better it's much better than the the effects with the DC um, well they're both DC no DC DC yeah Marvel is uh, the X-Men so, but the Marvel one, it's still good effects, but it's not. They didn't put the time in, I don't think, to the Flash. They seem to be a bit more interested in Aquaman and Wonder Woman a bit. The thing is, it wasn't until I watched Aquaman, the movie, that I realised how powerful he really is. Because out of the water, he can't match a lot of the other superheroes. You know, he can't fly and I don't know but under the water he can pretty much uh, outdo everybody because he can control 
say. I wonder why the gate keeps slamming like that. I'm not, go I'm not going out there. There's literally no lights out there at all. Apart from the lights that are there. Other than those lights, there's no other lights. So I don't go out there when it's dark. I'm not scared of the dark, I'm just braver in the night time. And, you know, it's light. <laughs> I'm not scared at night, I'm just brave during the day. There's a difference in it. Oh, here's something. Oh, can you believe this? Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. And I ordered a ordered a grocery delivery from Sainsbury's. For those uh, listening to this in the future, so I'm recording this on the th what day is it wow it's 21 minutes past midnight so it's the 14th of November 2019 so if you listen to this in 2029 or something in 10 years time then I should really mention what Sainsbury's is it's a supermarket I guess I should explain what a supermarket is well how do I explain it we used to have these big buildings they weren't really buildings they were more like little not Lego but that's not a good description but kind of more like a warehouse if you see them being built they're they're put together pretty quickly and they're like sheds really um, anyway they're these big buildings and people used to go there and purchase groceries like food anything to do with like household stuff um, clothes even you know and supermarkets were blamed like in the 80s 90s 2000s whatever you know over about 30 year period 40 years supermarkets got blamed for taking away the business from independent shops you know independent uh, news agents independent post offices independent uh, butchers and independent bakeries and, uh, independent sausage makers I don't know and uh, and they took over and people would drive and buy all a week's food like all in one go maybe and and then they, they started opening smaller supermarkets that took away the business from the remaining shops if they could and uh, so they got a lot of flack over the years but 
even though they created hundreds of thousands of jobs for people and the the shopping experience for a lot of people was possibly much nicer you know easier more choice you know things like that but and then well as you know now in 2029 you get everything from Amazon so is basically you say into your smart device we, we don't call them smart devices anymore do we in 2029 you just speak out loud and Amazon does the rest and within two hours an hour whatever you've ordered is delivered to your doorstep and it's done instantly Our supermarkets were the precursor to that. Due to the internet, when the internet started, and well, not when it started, but once the supermarkets started to realise that more and more purchases were being made online, they started offering delivery and you know have their own websites so you could order online order on your app on your phone and stuff like that oh we used to have phones back then as well those were you know the things that you just press on your ear it's like that but it was like a handheld thing it's uh Yeah, they got rid of them eventually. They realised the uh, yeah it wasn't great for eyes. Um, but basically, the supermarkets couldn't keep up with. Amazon because Amazon owned well at that time they didn't own everything they didn't rule the world at that time but you know as we know now they they rule, they rule everything uh, this is their world but a very efficient world some uh, past political figures from the past would have been quite pleased with how efficient everything <laughs> everything runs now in 2029 and city supermarkets they kind of dwindled out unfortunately because they didn't give the same service But the one thing is, we've still got delivery people, people delivering. The jobs just got transferred into other things. So that's okay. <laughs> and podcasts became really, as you know, really popular. Because in 2019, while I'm doing this, this particular podcast I worked out I get 600 plus sometimes more downloads a day for people listening to each day so that's not that's not 600 each day it can be much more than that 
at 600 per episode per day. So if I release this episode in an hour's time, then that day, the 24 hour period will be about 600 downloads on this podcast and a couple of others which this is on as well. Now 2029, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of downloads. And it's weird, isn't it, to think back all that time. And I I used to think 600 was good for just one recording. And... But realistically, like compared to what it is now, it's amazing. And then, as you know, it was what, 2000 and, what's it, 2020, 2024, wasn't it? So five years ago, when I became king of the world. Now, Admittedly, I'm you know, guessing this. <laughs> I just realised I was getting a bit carried away there. I'd settle for, I'll settle for Emperor. Don't need to be king. Emperor's fine. And... You know what? When I was younger, and I thought... If I ever lived in a world, an Amazonian world, I thought it would be a wonderful place to be based on certain films that I've watched. Didn't think it would be all about packaging and boxes. Oh, yeah, that's that's the point, yesterday. So I I had to get a few bits for my flat. My my, um, toaster broke. My kettle's pretty much... It's running out, you know? The kettle, when it's boiling... It just reminds me of watching the London Marathon and some of those people that are just getting, you know, about 100 yards away from the finishing line. And they just have, they're dragging themselves, you know, they're de- determined to get over that line. No matter what it takes. And I, I, I kind of get that sense with my kettle. So I've got a new one coming and a, uh, a toaster as well. Because the toaster broke. And here's the thing. I got this metallic week um, like a calendar planner whatever to put on the fridge door it said it was the right size for any fridge door and it's basically just uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday Friday, Saturday, Sunday with a box on the left hand corner top saying important things to do this week and at the right hand side bottom what else I don't know something else so so it came came in the post ironically it's not really ironically it's the wrong word but I ordered stuff from the catalogue 
and I ordered stuff from Amazon later and the Amazon package arrived first so Amazon really occasionally I have to wait for stuff so I was um, getting soundproofing for my flat during the summer just trying to get the place soundproof so I could do recordings without gates slamming in the garden but even the soundproofing doesn't stop that hopefully when I've converted the garden shed and done all that it'll be better but so I had a couple of things that didn't turn up for about 10 days but often things do get here within the day or two which is pretty amazing really That's why I think it's important to, because they're such hard workers, the delivery drivers for Amazon, it's important to make sure you give them a nice big kiss. Just to say thank you. And it's got a double, double uh, usefulness. <laughs> it's got double use. I'm gonna have to edit that out and delete, make that a bit quieter. Double usefulness is instead of them insisting on you signing for the package or opening the door, they're quite happy just to leave it on the doorstep. So that's quite good. I almost feel like I've got a relationship with my uh, stomach. Andre, that was Andre. Oh, Andre. Yesterday. Oh, the packaging. Right, I got this packaging. And it was this big box. And I thought, I wonder what that is. Because I ordered a couple of things from the catalogue. Stuff that I needed. Needed a new bin. Needed uh, a microwave. And stuff like that. And it's all on the catalogue. So I'll pay it off over the next eight months. And this box, I opened it up, and there was this little fridge magnet planner in a box that could have carried probably 20 of them. I mean, it's... The box is big enough for me to put half my belongings in. It's, it's a huge box. And then a the microwave came. As it was. <laughs> like a little box. It's like, oh, you make your minds up, wouldn't you? And then one of the boxes that had the... Oh, the, um, dun, 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 dun. yeah I got a lamp because my light bulb went and the lamp broke it's really you know, weird when everything sort of breaks at the same time um, my voice broke didn't it last week so I got this lamp 
like a stand-up lamp. And the packaging is a really heavy thing, actually. I was surprised. And I had to put it together, which I managed to do. Again, which I was quite surprised. Becoming a lot more practical in my uh, old age pensioner age. And uh, the packaging inside had this sty is it sty foam styrene styrene foam you know which they put inside the box to keep stuff sort of safe you have it in laptops and televisions and all kinds of stuff usually at the side well, this had a two round indents where the base of the light went and where the lampshade of the light went. Both heavy bits of metal. And the long bit, the bit that, I mean, it wasn't long to start with. I had to maneuver it and like pull it a little bit to make it longer, to sort of to make it straight and the wire went through from the top all the way through the bottom so I kind of had to pull on it to sort of even you know and then I had to screw it just because it all kind of it was like four bits that screwed together and uh, but I made a mistake I left it on the floor, the polystyrene. Polystyrene? The polystyrene, I think it is. I left it on the floor. And I was in here on my big black squeaky uh, sunburnt peely chair. And I heard this scratching. I didn't know what it was. I kind of ignored it. I could hear it. But it was a lot... A lot scratchier than normal. And I thought, I better check, make sure Andre's okay, that he's not trapped somewhere and he you know, locked himself in the cupboard or something, which he sometimes does. And the sight I saw... Well, I made a video of it. Two little videos that I put on my YouTube channel and also I posted the YouTube videos on my Facebook page I couldn't believe what I saw he had been digging into the styrofoam but proper digging into it he was covered in this white stuff the last time I saw him, last time I saw him like that, was when I took him out in the snow, and did like have little bits of ice stuck to him. He actually quite likes the snow, and uh, but he was covered, absolutely covered. And not only was he covered, the whole of the bedroom floor were covered. The bed, my bed was covered because he'd climbed onto the bed and spread it all over there. The hallway was covered. I was walking it and he was walking in and out. Afterwards, he spread it everywhere, including the kitchen and the living room. It, it's just everywhere. And I spent hours cleaning it up today and getting rid of the, the styrof styrofoam, styrofoam, whatever. However, it was funny because normally if he sees me filming him, he stops doing whatever he's doing and he runs off because he's very camera shy. But if there was something about that styrofoam that he 
loved. And someone posted, uh, uh, so I put, I filmed him, and then he stopped doing it. And then I filmed him again when he started, and I picked him up and showed like all the mess all over him. Someone posted on YouTube. Um, isn't that phone dangerous for that ferret? Um, well, I don't know. It's not something I ever really let him do. He has done it in the past, but not like that. He's had like a, like a, a plus, you know, just a flat bit where he's been playing around with it and but he's never been able to dig into anything before like this because it already had a hole in it he could really dig proper dig so he's not done it before and with the amount of mess he made he's not doing it again but the reason I didn't stop him doing it because he was having so much fun he was having the best time. And I, th I when I went in there, I took, a, took the film or whatever, I thought, should I just stop him and I'll take it away from him? And I thought, no. He's really enjoying himself. And... I don't think he'd do it if it was harmful for him. You know, if it was making him cough or sneeze, it'd stop. He's, you know, he's pretty, pretty bright, you know, in that way. He doesn't, doesn't purposely do things that harm him, self. And maybe if he was scratching in polyphene, styrene or whatever, day in day out for years perhaps it would have a toxic effect but pretty much it was a one off and after the amount of mess he left and how long it took me to clear it up and still not cleared up because there's bits of polystyrene everywhere just little bits just they're just they're stuck to everything I mean, he's still got some stuck in his hair now. He's, cause he's walking around and it's sticking to him. It's like magnets. So I didn't reply to the message that was put on YouTube. It's like, there was one, isn't there? There was one. I'm not going to let him do something that's harmful to him. Not if I know it's harmful. But he was loving it he was having so much fun it just seemed a shame to stop it in fact that's probably the most fun I've seen him have in ages where he was just completely engrossed in what he was doing and I've even got a bathtub in here with dirt in it for him to dig in and he doesn't So what I'm thinking, I need to do something, maybe make a hole, and maybe you dig in the hole, rather than make a hole. I think he likes it when there's already a hole there. Yeah. Perhaps that's why he liked this polystyrene, because he could dig in something that's already kind of made. He could dig further. With the bathtub that I've got in the living room, it's only like a, uh, a toddler's bathtub but it's full of dirt, but it's even dirt. So if I if I dig into it and make a big hole, well not a big hole, but a nice size hole, perhaps then he'd like have a good old, good old dig. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you're listening in 2019, Andre was the 
we're kind of like a double act Andre and Jason and Andre is the talented one he's the one that everyone loves he's the cute one he's so cute annoying as anything <laughs> if you live with him but he's cute and it's because he's cute he gets away with it because I'll be asleep and he'll climb on me and he'll start trying to wake me up he will he'll start like uh, he'll climb onto my face he'll lick my lick my face then he'll start licking my ears then he'll start nibbling around my eyes he used to bite my lip but he doesn't, he doesn't do that anymore then he'll start like biting my fingers but just gently and he'll just push me like jump jump up and down on me a bit try and wake me up because he wants to play or he wants me to just wants me to be awake for whatever reason and sometimes Even that can be a little bit annoying. It's like cute. I've got someone that... I don't know. If something's... Probably something that people wouldn't expect from a ferret. To be like that. That's sort of very much more like a dog or a cat, isn't it? To sort of climb on the bed and sort of to get your attention and to wake you up because he wants to go out or wants feeding well Andre does that but his intention is I think just to annoy me he just does it for the hell of it because I don't even I don't even close the doors anymore I just let him come and go do what he wants he sleeps on the bed and he runs off and he sleeps in his bed in here and he comes back and sleeps on my bed and a few days ago I woke up and he was cuddled up next to me but right quite close to my face sort of close to my chest and normally he sleeps at the bottom of the bed near my feet and I woke up and he'd climbed on and he'd he was just like cuddled up to me I was just, oh, it was so beautiful. A special moment. <sighs> so I'm going to go say thank you for listening. Hopefully I bored you to sleep. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.